introduce uh, Michel Antonio. Was just here a second ago. He looks fit. He's ready to go. Yeah, he's back. He's fit. He uh, he played last week when we played Man United on Sunday. He plays for under 23 on Friday. Uh, it was a plan. It was part of the plan, and he looked really good then. Like he's in shape. He's been training with us for two and a half weeks now. As I said, he done 90 minutes on a big pitch in a official game for under 23s. Then he joined us in training back to us for the trainings, and he he looks good and he looks uh, he looks ready, of course. Then yesterday. Uh, Sheku Kuyate and Andy Carroll, they started to train with us. So they done just a couple of trainings with us and uh, that's basically it. We're going to see with them, of course, they they had a, especially Andy, he had like a long layout, you know, for, for since, since, I don't know, since March or, or that, or April and uh, Sheku had a few weeks off, like, he missed. Basically, it happened in the beginning of the preseason in our first training in Austria. So uh, that's two of them. And Manuel uh, Lanzini, he's he's joining us in training. He's training separately, individually, and he's joining us on Monday. So uh, we're gonna have a full squad back uh, for a Newcastle game. Still, for this game, we're gonna have 100 percent. Mikey Antonio back for the rest is uh, for Sheku and for Andy it's a bit too early I think. Uh, was there some harsh analysis after the defeat at Old Trafford? Or not or harsh analysis. It you're was, not too concerned. It's still very well. Also, I said after the game I had a feeling here in my stomach and I still have a bit of it. You know, uh, that 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 uh, you can't say okay. You can't say oh it's Man United. Or is that, or is that? Yeah, but we should have done 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 a bit better. And uh, especially when it comes to last couple of minutes or last few minutes, you know, that uh, we didn't give up individually. We done our best and all that, but it wasn't very smart, and it wasn't like you don't have to 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 like crumble. And we crumble because it's not the same if you lose two nil and four nil, you know. So uh, we made analysis. Uh, I wanted to find a balance, of course, between criticizing and talking about what wasn't good, because obviously some of the things were not good enough. But on the other hand, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't, uh, you don't want to lose a bit of confidence because of one defeat. So it's uh, so we done that balance, and uh, we looked really good this week on training and. Uh, Train today and, and tomorrow we have of course light session yeah. and then uh, we want to approach the game against uh, Southampton in a very very positive mood. Of course, knowing what what we have to do to get to get anything out of that game because again every game in a Premier League is very difficult. Uh, we are playing against a team that done really well, that is doing really well, and they are very consistent. Uh, no matter that they are changing the managers, but they are not changing the, the players a lot, they are not changing the way they are playing and all that, and they are doing really well. Uh, what's the latest on William Carvalho? Are you confident getting that done? I don't, to be fair, uh, I don't know, we're going to see what's, uh, what's happened there with, with ins and outs, you know. Uh, like it's very busy, it's becoming even more busy in, in, uh, in other clubs, and so uh, also with us, but I I left it to the board. I left it to the chairman, mm. and with the people who are who are involved in in ins and outs, and I'm concentrate uh, only and totally on 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 our game against Southampton. Karen Brady said that 17 of the 20 Premier League clubs would be in favour of the window closing early. Would you be in favour of closing early as well? Yes, I mean it is uh, it is it it is mutual from from me and the club. We are on the same line, of course. Mm. Uh, just I, I would like that to happen. It would help everybody. Mm, but uh, for me, it has to be across the leagues, because uh, otherwise, then there's no point. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. But ironically, it would put the it 
it would put the clubs even in a worse situation that you would still lose some players if if the clubs from abroad want them and you want to be able to replace them you know so if it's it would only pro- it would only protect us in terms that no other premier league clubs can take your players your let's say Coutinho situation or whoever that wouldn't stop Liverpool of losing him but it would stop them of finding the replacement for him so for me it's a great idea I'm the first one who is definitely yes yes because like this is like you are really you are starting the pre-season with one team you are finishing the pre-season with the other team and then when it starts uh, you go like some teams are, are like losing like 30% of the team or whatever it's it's a new team it's different and uh, for me it would be much better if you if you it doesn't have to be at the start of the pre-season of course but let's say Maybe before the first game of the season it should be and definitely should be across Europe this is giving the people around football a lot of time to speculate to 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 like uh, think to act and all that and uh, it's definitely the hardest for the managers and for the board you mentioned a continuing situation similar situation with Diego Costa as well without wishing to make a comment on those particular situations do you have sympathy with Jurgen Klopp and Antonio Conte because you had something very similar last season with Dimitri Payet when a player decides he doesn't want to play for the club anymore what can you do? <laughs> of course I have the sympathy you know for that and that what you asked me before that would stop at least when the season starts it would stop those kind of moves that the manager I mean uh, you want to you want to have your team but you want to be concentrated only on the game on Saturday and you are not because of those things uh, of course I have a, I have a sip it's it's harder for them and sometimes Sometimes you are on the other side of the story, you know what I mean? Sometimes you are in position that you are getting the player and all that, but but uh, but it definitely it doesn't help. Uh, it doesn't help the managers. The players have too much power and are they able to hold clubs to ransom? Yeah, but the main impo- uh, what is very, very important and what gives you strength as a manager and what also gives you strength uh, as a club, is and it weakens a little bit the strength from the, of the other side is that you're on the same line with your board that you're on the same line with the chairman and that 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 is very important because then you you personally the manager the chairman and the club uh, first of all it's it's becoming uh, really really powerful so you have to be on the same line has the balance gone too far now, or is there anything that can happen in football to stop players? Ah, I don't know. You know, you know, you know better than me, or as you know, as much as I know that 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 the power is too too much on the side of uh, the player and the the players and the agents. And it's hard for the managers, although sometimes you are, you know, you are in the other situation. And I was a few times in that situation, but what I what what uh, I never recommend the player, and I never suggest, and I never ask from from the player, because make no mistake, we are sometimes on this side, sometimes on the other side. But I never, ever advise or ask from the player to stop training, to stop the that that that's low. That is low, to be fair, and it shouldn't be like that. Absolutely. Just. One, one real positive I thought out last week was, was Declan Rice's performance. And as you know, this is a club whereby <coughs> it's traditional and it's important that young players come through the academy and play for the first team. You must have been delighted with his. Look, we, we are never. Although it's nice to have those kind of situation and it's like a bonus, let's say, and all that, we are never trying to force it. I did, did well. I didn't go. Well, okay, let's put him. You know, to to gain some what, you know. Uh, but he uh, is a boy, uh, very matured for his age, very very good for his age. Very, he's thinking about the game. 
plus he's, he's, he's got the quality definitely and he impressed everybody the players the staff the I don't know West Ham family or no and me of course in the preseason he played almost every game okay we played with the whole whole whole, whole squad there and he basically he forced uh, he wasn't in the plans from the beginning let's be honest you know he was there very important because in the beginning you need players because you want the first few preseason games to be played two times 45 minutes and all that but then you see he's doing well there then next one he's playing he's doing well there he's doing well there so uh, I mean it's too early for for the kid uh, but uh, is he improving or is he doing really good yes he is and uh, definitely the reason okay we had some injuries some players as you know are coming back now or in two weeks time especially from that from that area in midfield but uh, he came on against Man United only because he was really I was confident that he can do it like like this because he did it already in last couple of months he came on against against Burnley last eight minutes or five minutes I don't know and it wasn't like not not important game for us it was very important game for us and it was 2-1 for us and Burnley was trying to equalize we put him because he was best option for us then so Rhys is uh, uh, still it can go either way you know he is but so I don't want him I don't want to praise him too much you know despite I think that he and his family are totally down to earth and they're going to be focused and stay focused but still there's no no reason no time and no and no uh, space to to make like now new new whatever out of him he's still very beginning he's still very low you know but is he doing well yes he's doing well yes he's doing well just one other from me, and um, it's not really West Ham related, but last season West Ham moved into a big new stadium and, and all the problems that, that you had regarding that, I'm talking about football, on the football side. This weekend, Pochettino and Spurs move into a big stadium that isn't theirs, and, and what, what advice would you give them? Because many people are saying they may have the same sort of problems that West, in terms of playing, so I'm not talking about anything, I'm just talking about in terms of getting used to playing in a really big venue when you're not used to it. I don't know, we found it different and it wasn't only us. It wasn't only us, it, it happened to few clubs or to most of the clubs who changed the stadium from going to one compact stadium to a big arena, you know, and a lot of them have done it because the new modern stadiums, they are multifunctional, you know, and you need that kind of space and everything. So I don't know how will they react. Uh, but again, you know, there's no magic formula to go around that and to find a shorter way. I don't know, but uh, all I'm saying that last year, last year they were, they were, uh, I wouldn't say struggling, but they found it more difficult to play in a Champions League uh, than they. It wasn't that that intensive. It's it it didn't look that great, let's say, because let's be honest, home in Premier League at White Hart Lane, they were very, very impressive in the Champions League. And it, all, and it wasn't always against top, 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 top clubs, you know. They, it was very hard them to, to close the opponent down and all that. So I don't know, I'm not too bothered, to be fair. <laughs> but no, but... but uh, uh, they will need some time to, to adjust, although they already played a few games at Wembley. Yeah. So, then, hello, can I ask you about your, your new signing, uh, Joe Hart? I know he conceded four goals, but what impact has he had on the dressing room since he's been here? Well, John made a big impact. He's, he's number one England's goalkeeper, and uh, he's very vocal in a most positive way. He's very vocal in trainings also, in a game. And that's what you need, your goalkeeper, not to be the only one, but to organize the defense, to shout and all that. Um, 
so we are very very ha very happy with him so far so we have really two really good goalkeepers and uh, yeah it's good um Andy Carroll you said back in training he's constantly suffering from injury problems is there anything he's trying to do with his world cup at the end of the season he's trying anything different to stay fit throughout the season Ah, look, uh, yeah, we we tried even before we tried, or we were trying, but it didn't happen. Uh, now, um, us as a club and him personally, it would be wrong to think about the World Cup. We all should think about next ten, ten games or a uh, few months, and then hopefully, if it's good, then we can build on that. Unfortunately, so far with such a long layout, uh, you can't you you can't think and plan that 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 long term. You know what I mean. So, but our aim, our aim, we 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 are trying to to find a solution that's gonna make him long term fit and all that. But for that, you need you need him to start playing games. We don't want to rush him now in a game against Southampton, no matter how much uh, sometimes he's very, you know, that he's got, not sometimes, always he's got a great impact on the bench, on the pitch, but but we don't want to go into the situation like that after a few days of training he, he plays for us. Maybe in that game he would be great, maybe in that game he would score the goal or whatever, but so far that kind of the approach have have caused like uh, new injuries for himself. So of course we wanna we don't wanna drag it too long, but but uh, he has to do a, at least kind of a short preseason, you know, before he he enters the pitch, and o only in that way he, uh, we can maintain he, or he can maintain to be to stay fit. And then, if that comes, he can think about those things that that you mentioned in the beginning. Um, if Philip Coutinho does leave for Barcelona, are you worried that Liverpool will come for Lanzini? Does that cross your mind at all? Uh, no. Well, well I uh, I got it from the papers and all that. Max, Max, because uh, <laughs> those stories he he emails me straight away, so to make me a little bit to to. To shake me a bit, <laughs> but but uh, no, I said it last week. We spoke about that uh, before Man United game. I think uh, uh, I speak to Manu every day. You know that he is very happy. He, he, he really feels it. Uh, he feels it at home here. He feels wanted. He feels like uh, you know. You you can feel it. You can see it. You don't have to talk to the players, but especially if you talk to him, you see how he's smiling here. How he's happy. He broke into a national team of Argentina, despite he was injured or he's still out. He he's got a call from call up for 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 a September game. So he knows if if I'm playing here for West Ham, the time I, if I have a good season for West Ham, I have a chance to improve, to sign a better contract with West Ham, and and to play for Argentina. So he is very happy here. And you don't want to set a price tag on him if Liverpool do get 100 million for Coutinho? What would it cost? No, no, no. I uh, I'm sure he's going to stay with us. I'm sure he's going to stay with us. And he felt like, uh, you know, <laughs> okay, Max, I want to <laughs> unbelievable. No, no. He knows that he's wanted, you know. As I said, the chairman and the board, we, we, he was on loan and we took an option even before, before, before we had to. We activated it. He was voted. The players' player of the year, which is also, you know, it's a it's a good thing. It makes you feel really wanted at the place. He likes it here. Thank you. Okay. No. Camera's off. <laughs> <laughs>